What's up internet world and welcome back to the channel. Today I bring you the 2022 Genesis GV70. We already reviewed the GV70 on our channel. Why are we doing it again? Well, the answer is we reviewed the three and a half liter twin turbo GV70. That was the first launch that they rolled out to the market, but now they have a more economy motor. And that is a two and a half liter that makes 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque in this majestic SUV. So let's check it out. So the other big thing is that this just won the Motor Trend SUV of the year. Yep, the GV70 did. And at what price point you ask? 42,000 bucks US, that's what they start at, $42,000. And look at this front end. Is this not worth $42,000 to you? So you know what's interesting? So if you're looking at a Hyundai Santa Fe calligraphy, it's about the same price point as something like this in the four cylinder two and a half liter, but this has less tech and less toys included. So what would you buy? Now, the people that buy Hyundai Santa Fe calligraphies are not really worried about the design on the outside. That is served for the German buyer. And that German buyer is competing against a Q5, obviously, the GLC, and of course, the X3. But this is better looking. So no matter where you live, whether you be in Canada or the US, you can still actually hit the subscribe button and subscribe to us because that'll get us to 100K. But on the car, there's four different trim levels you can buy. So no matter whether you buy a Select, a Standard, an Advanced Plus, a Prestige, no matter which side of the border you're on, you can buy this and get three years of free maintenance. And they will come to your house, pick up the car, and they will drop it off because it is a Genesis. So we've already done the three and a half liter, so we're not gonna spend too much time. We're just gonna sort of breeze over some of the differences and maybe point out some of the cool parts about this GV70. Obviously, we can talk about the quad LED design with the dual LEDs coming through. But this difference is quite significant because this is the elegant version. So you can see it's not as sporty as the red one we reviewed. This one doesn't have any of the black shiny grill all the way in the bottom, and it's definitely a lot smaller. Like this. This little vent on the side here is definitely a lot smaller than the other one, which is pretty massive. So the bumper is definitely different on this than the three and a half liter. This is obviously beautiful because there's no huge license plate covering it. Thank God for a manufacturer's car. It's nice and pretty. So the other cool parts about it is this is what comes standard. It's got adaptive cruise control standard, lane centering standard, blind spot indicator standard. And yeah, this is a standard engine. So voila, it says turbo, nothing fancy to see here, but this makes 300 horsepower and 311 pound feet of torque out of a two and a half liter. Now the three and a half liter makes 375 horsepower and 391 pound feet of torque. So it is significantly more in the six banger. So if you look at the side here, you'll see this overbite of this front hood, sort of a unique design when it comes to this front hood. I saw that in the last one we got and I was like, what is this overbite? But it kind of flows when you look at it a bit from a distance. So if you move down over here, you will see that these are 19 inch wheels, unlike the 20s that were on the three and a half liter. It was more of a sporty, they called it a G matrix design wheel. It was like a five star and it had this, basically the same design that's on the grill is actually on the wheel on the three and a half liter. It still continues with this air curtain. So while air does flow through here and creates what they call the air curtain. And moving along here, again, this is not a sport model. So there's no blacked out trim, it all has aluminum or sort of a satin finished trim, including the roof rails. And there's no black fin that comes all the way down here on the, that stretches the side of the vehicle. Um, one of the complaints I had before was the fact that when your keys in your pocket and you walk up to the car, you can only lock it or unlock it with the front door. You can't do it with the back door, just the front. Now it does have your 360 camera all the way around and the mirrors do fold in as well. But if you take a look at the back of the car here, it does have the wide body design. You can see it a little bit more evidently now on a white car than you could on the red car with all the lines and stuff in it. So yeah, a lot of people do like the design of this thing. Obviously it gives you great value for money and it looks pretty nice from the front. So let's take a look at the back. All right, so you're trying to figure out 
what is the difference between the most expensive two and a half liter and the most expensive three and a half liter? Well, that answer is about $10,000. But you do get something more in the three and a half liter. You get mono block calipers. You even get a camera that detects the road ahead that changes the suspension. Yes, that's all in the three and a half liter, as well as an ELSD. Now, before you hit up the comments on the, you know, and let me know that in your country that you get all this stuff in a four cylinder, well, everyone's different. But it does have a 17 and a half gallon fuel tank, so that'll take you as far as about 400 miles or 450 miles, depending how heavy your foot is. So on the back of this, very similar to the other G73 and a half liter. The only real difference here is the rear bumper. At least the lower part is different. It was more black and definitely this one's more recessed, but the big change is really the exhaust. The exhaust tips were circular and this one's sort of a inverted heart shape of sorts. But yeah, on the bottom here, one of the main complaints is the reverse light being low. I mentioned that before, but not a really big deal to me because this is beautiful. It's really funny though. My wife noticed that this is a lot better looking than anything she's ever seen. Except I had a red one on the driveway like two months ago. Maybe she just likes white. All right, so let's talk about the depth we have. We've got 39 inches and as far as width go, we've got 41 and a half. Now, one of the good things I do like when I drive this Genesis is I can see out this rear window. It's not very tight. A lot of the headrests go really high, but if you sit here, you can see there is still a pretty big opening. It's just really, really smooth and quiet inside. But speaking of inside, let's jump in the back seats. Now, I just reviewed the 2022 Jeep Wagoneer, and I can tell you that these doors are more solid. I literally just did it like three hours ago. Listen, oh, it's like total difference. It's solid, it's just really good. No wonder this thing won Motor Trend Car of the Year. Anyways, hand down, the quality inside is really good, but look how many, this is not super fancy, but it's cool that I have all these adjustments. That's kind of nice. And also on the side here, I don't know if you guys can see this, but basically underneath the window switch, which is wide, I should say, it's twice the width of a regular window switch. You can obviously lock and unlock your car, but as I was mentioning, underneath here, they've got this little design that's illuminated. So in the three and a half liter, it's sort of a different wood design, but in this one, it's like a nightclub. And it's a nightclub in here because these windows are like extra tinted. They're like borderline illegal as far as light coming in. Feels very like luxurious and special. This does have manual sunshades all the way up and it doesn't have a lot of visibility. They do have a pretty wide, just the design of it, a pretty big uh, C pillar right there. It's not as like squared out than the Wagoneer we just reviewed. It does have really good quality buttons and it does have this really nice uh, rear sort of cargo net behind the passenger seat, also driver's seat. And it does have these adjustments that I can simply just use my finger and I have adjustments right here to adjust this seat so that people right here actually have more leg room and are not as squished. You can also play a lot of funny games to the person sitting here and you can switch them all the way forward. It does have a really nice feel when I take the vents and I go left to right. It's got a really good click, basically on or off, if you can hear it or not, but see, good quality. This does have unique seat belts. It is a fancy color. And the only time you get seat belts like this is if you're spending over a hundred grand, but not in this thing. This one is cheapo. Even the sunroof, it's tinted really dark. The lights above me, I can barely see. It's just really dark and luxurious. Now, as far as luxury goes, there are two USBs, regular USBs, not USB-Cs, and there is a plug, a full out plug. There's no cigarette lighter back here. And of course you have your HF back controls. It's three zone climate. So this is for me in the back. There is heated seats on either side and there are three increments, three, two, one off, three, two, one off. And they're really quality buttons. When I turn them, they're not clickety, clickety, click. They're just soft and nice. Just those little details make the difference. Front seat of the GV70. It's just so good. It's just really good. It's good, the solidness of it. Cause that to me is like, this is safe. It's solid, safe, quiet feels very German. It's the stuff that we liked about German and wanted to have German cars because that solidness. It's just not attached to German anymore. It's become just quality now, right? So it's like the quality is what you're after. And you can see that when you sit in here, it's just a different design. It's not like they copied anybody. Yeah, there's some question that you can copy the Bentley in the front, but inside here, there's not a lot of copying going on. It feels very Genesis, I guess, because they're the first ones to do it. Now, if you look at the design, it falls all the way from the door, all the way across. Now that's not new. That sort of, that sort of design architecture is common nowadays. It all tries to flow together. But what is different, as I mentioned, is these little side panels here that are illuminated. It's really cool. It gives that little zigzag design. It's got this white 
lines flowing through it. Pretty cool. Now, if we start over here, it does have memory seat one and two that you could set it. It does have these really cool, as I mentioned, like BMW used to have this, where they sort of encase their plastic in a metally plastic feeling. And this is what this is. It looks like it's steel or metal, but it's actually plastic. And again, it has folding mirrors and it's got this cool ambient lighting that flows all the way through. There's a lot of hard touch buttons. There's not a lot of digital going on. The only time that using touch and feel is basically this 14 and a half inch screen, which is massive, but it's also done by this little beautiful dual rotary knob. So this first knob that looks like it's Swarovski's crystal, you can use your finger to go left and right and it'll adjust the, the radio station or whatever you want to do. And, but it doesn't show it. You can't look at it and, and it doesn't say left for this, right for this, like a lot of other manufacturers. It's just blank. And underneath that is where you shift your gears from reverse neutral drive and then park. It's such a beautiful piece. They just do such a good job. Like the quality is really good. I think I said that about a hundred times in the last video as well. And I'll say it again at this time. The only complaint I really have would be the steering wheel. The steering wheel is kind of really old guy steering wheel. I wish it was just a little bit more modern to sort of fit, but hey, maybe that's who they're going after. Again, quality's there, hard buttons are there. All your HVAC controls are similar to the ones in the back, very easy to turn, very obvious, very simple. It also does have fingerprint, so I can put my fingerprint here, it knows it's me, and off we go. All my settings will adjust based on my little fingerprint. You have your volume controls all done by this little sliding rotary knob here, and again, your tuning. And then when I push down, I have my drive and terrain modes. I've got eco, comfort, sport, and custom, and then terrain is snow, mud, and sand. And then I've got a camera button here I hit and then voila. Look how big and beautiful that camera display is. It's very, very clean. One of the cleanest in the market, definitely. There's no doubt that that is cleaner than the car I just reviewed. It also does have wireless charging. I simply just take my phone and I slide it in here. And then voila, I have two USBs as well that I can plug in if I don't want to use wireless charging. I have two couple just here. And yes, a glove box with a cigarette lighter that has a lot of good space in this thing that's kind of a waste. The armrest doesn't slide backwards and forwards, but it's fairly far forward enough that I can simply just put my elbows on both sides and drive away. This obviously does on the steering half keep you in your lane, stop and go, automatic cruise control, and some paddle shifters that are decently shaped, and they are not totally out there, but again, this is not a super performance vehicle. So now let's talk about the 14 and a half inch screen. It is fully touch screen, and again, I can use a little pad to adjust it there. But the main difference between the three and a half and the two and a half is the driver's digital display. This one has a half display. It doesn't have a full display like the three and a half liter. On the left side, it's got a speedometer and it's got your gas gauge. And to the right of it, it's got the world's greatest, smartest idea. And that is a camera that faces towards my blind spot. So when I indicate to go right, it gives me the camera there. And when I get indicate to go left, it shows me the camera there right in front of me. The only kind of weird part is when I indicate to go left, I'm looking that way, but my eyes are drawn back to look here. So that's the only weird part. I personally only use it to go right. I don't use it to go left. That's really the only change. Do I care about not having a full digital display? I think for that feature, it would be nice to have both sides. So the left is that side and the right is this side. But hey, I guess you can't be picky. So I'll just go quickly go over this 14 and a half inch screen and then we'll take this thing for a drive. So like all of the 14 and a half inch screens I've talked about, it's got your map, your navigation and your satellite radio and then on and on. But I like the satellite radio the way it's displayed. I just like how it has each individual box for different things. Like it shows you the track that's playing. You can rewind it. It does have rewinding satellite radio because it says record right there. And it's just laid out very, very easy. So I go back to the home screen here. We've got media, HD radio, phone, connected services. But let's talk about sounds of nature. And we've talked about this many times before so let's go through there's lively forest there's calm sea waves rainy day and basically it gives you the sound of where you're at now we've talked about this before but it's cool they have this and i like to sort of brush up again on sounds of nature next up here is quiet mode that's important to me quiet mode basically sets the volume level in the front to 25 so the kids in the back can sleep next up would be terrain mode that's kind of interesting so when i hit terrain mode voila this is what you see so you've got your snow, pretty cool. It shows you the amount of power being transferred to all the wheels and obviously the incline differences you have. Then next up is mud. Mud is the same sort of thing, but it just gives that little visual to see that you're you know, getting fancy with your mud. And then of course, sand. So it's kind of cool that you have that as a specific feature in the car. So if we get out this and I move all the way down, you've got your notification and then of course your manual. I was a big, I was a big believer in an online manual. That's probably, probably the reason I started this channel to sort of go over people's cars just to show them things they may or may not know about it. Now that it's in a QR code in your phone, it's pretty awesome to have. Anyways, that's it with the 14 and a half inch screen. Let's take this thing for a drive and see how different it is than the three and a half liter. So 
So I'm in the 2022 GV70 with the two and a half liter. Great smooth transmission. Great wipers, they're quiet. Nice tick tock, tick tock when I signal and indicate. Very smooth ride, very similar to what the V6 is. The V6 is a little bit more harsh. The two and a half liters, liter is a little bit more softer, mainly because the wheel, uh, the tires are obviously have a wider diameter. So a little bit more tire as less rim. So it's not as stiff. It's definitely more luxurious than the three and a half liter in terms of how the ride feels. In terms of inside, well, yes, you can get the mesh seats. You get a few other toys that you can get on the V6. But this is a great, great, price point for what it gives you just so nice the only thing again is the steering wheel i'm not a big fan of the shape of the steering wheel but inside just the quality is so good and this week's been a heavy week for reviews i've reviewed four different cars a lot of cars in my brain and a lot of touch points and yes this is a good quality product it's just so i wouldn't really even know that i'm not in a german car when i think about german cars I think about solid feel this is what this feels like but this looks nicer in the front. Just the, the style of this thing just grabs people's attention. And it's not German. Oh, it's just a head scratcher, that's for sure. Out of all the Genesis product, I find that the GV70 has the best interior. The GV80 is really, really nice, there's no doubt about it. But I like how the center console is just like this thin sort of long bar, if you want to call it that. And everything's just kind of very easy for me to grab and touch as I drive here. As far as steering goes, well, I haven't picked a specific mode. This is just regular auto mode, but watch my hands and how, how direct the steering is. And this has got lane keep, keeping your lane. And obviously like Kia, Hyundai, Genesis, they all do a really good job. Now it wants me to touch the steering wheel. I do one of those. And again, it keeps me centered right in the lane. I have so much faith in this system. Oh, it tells me to keep my hand on the road, but there we go. It just feels so good. Acceleration time, foot on the ground, sport mode. A Little bit of turbo lag there off the bat. Once she starts pulling, she goes well. So it's geared like a German car. It's geared after about, a, would say, 50 miles an hour to actually start pulling fairly strong. And when it's in sport mode, that tack, it like lights up like a red lightsaber, like a fire ball lightsaber. That is pretty cool. Totally different than the speedometer, which is fairly basic. What a great, what a great backup camera. Look how nice that thing is. Very clean, three different. And listen, I just bought an F-150. That has a big camera, big screen to display the camera, but the quality is nowhere as nice as this thing. Great city zipper, man. This thing's a great city zipper or great second family car. This thing should win midsize SUV of the year. It's just so nice. It's built so well. And it just gives the person a fourth alternative to the German products, you know, like one that you can really stand behind. It's like so nice. The steering feel is so nice. It's just like, it's not like that rough BMW steering wheel that BMW has, that rough leather on the steering wheel. Rough leather on the seats, totally get it for wear, but on here, it's just nice to have this nice soft feel. Just a great job, man. Well, you guys obviously know I do love Genesis product. I think it's awesome. I think the whole brand lineup is really good. I don't think there's a fault in any of the cars they make. It's usually like one car that sucks and two that are decent and one that's okay, but I feel like across the brand, they make really good product. Obviously, I'm not sponsored by them. I just really like the product. They make, they good, make good stuff and give people an alternative, right? That's what we want. We want an alternative to the usual. So that gives it to you. So I hope you guys like this video. If you do, sort of just a breeze over, would I buy the V6 or would I buy the four banger? And to be honest, the way gas prices are right now, I'd be buying the four banger. I think the six makes lots of power. It's probably fast. But again, to find a really fast SUV, eh, kind of pointless. This stuff is more luxurious. So I think the four is good enough for what you need. And foot on the ground. Oh, man. <laughs> Still get the back end out of this thing. Rear wheel drive bias. Thanks for watching.